Hi everybody, we're back. And I'm really glad we got all that priming taken care of because this is like the best part of building your own airplane because you actually get to get the thing together and it starts to look like something now. So all that monotonous deburring and dimpling and edge finishing and scuffing and just making sure everything fits perfect all kind of comes together now and so we are going to assemble the RB7 left elevator or at least get started on it. Believe it or not one of the first things it says to do in the plans and the first subsection when you go to build this is to take care of all the stiffeners then rivet them to the skin and then move on to everything else. In the interest of priming everything together I kind of jump around the instructions a little bit just to you know make sure I'm, I'm being efficient so I'm priming all the parts at one time getting everything ready to assemble all at once so it takes a long time to get to this point but once we're finally here now I'm all laid out on my bench everything is ready to go one thing you can kinda of take notice and and I was trying to work this out but if you've ever seen my workbench before this back riveting plate was set up horizontally I did that before I even really knew what I was doing and hadn't built any part of an airplane yet. But uh, obviously it makes much more sense to have your back riveting plate set up this way because that way your workpiece is supported across the bench and your whatever you are going to be back riveting, most likely stiffeners, is running going to be running the same way as the back riveting plate. Otherwise I was having to set up benches and thin air right here and it just wasn't working and the workpiece wasn't supported so I just took this tabletop up and I flipped it upside down and I milled another insert for the back riveting plate vertically. I should have done it to begin with so if you're building an EAA workbench and you want to inset your back riveting plate into it, do it vertically and uh, I also recommend trying to utilize as much of the bench as possible so you don't run into the error of your workpiece running off the back riveting plate. You can damage your skin that way. We're about ready to go and everything's fitting great. Everything's, you can see the labels come right through AKZO primer. So I still know where everything goes and I got my rivets all set up here. I'm just gonna double check the plans and I'm probably gonna grab a test piece and we'll do a couple practices first just before we start digging into the real elevator skin. And I'm also, if you can notice, I'm starting with the bottom of the skin. The top edge, or the visible edge, we'll do once we uh, have some practice back riveting. Well, I'm glad you guys decided to join me today. Hope uh, we can all learn something together. You guys enjoy the video. Okay, so the question, what size rivets? Well, you want one and a half times the diameter of the rivet sticking out past the hole before you, you rivet it out. But the plans help you out. And if you look right here, 
all 701L, which is the skin, to all the 720s, which are all the stiffeners, are going to get a D426, which is the tapered flush head rivet. The diameter is 3, and the length is 3.5. And the same goes for the other side. If I come over to the other elevator, once I get around to it, all the stiffeners. So sometimes you got to go hunting for the rivet callouts, but they are there. Okay, so first things first, I got to get the rivets in there, and you can use back riveting tape, like this stuff here, but it's not cheap, and I don't see the big deal. The only idea is that there's no adhesive on the orange strip. So we're going to do a little experiment. We're going to do one line with the rivet tape and the other line with some blue 3M painter's tape. Okay, let's get some tape on them. Okay, so I got my piece flipped back over, and we'll get our first stiffener on all our rivets. Perfect. Okay, guys, we've got to keep this as flat as we possibly can. Not terrible, but not liking that guy. Okay, we got a couple we got to drill out there. That's all right. It's bound to happen. And, uh, but let's carry on here and uh, see if we can do better. Well, the forbidden error, guys. Not over my plate. Dare I look under the skin? Well, I think I might have gotten lucky. There's just an indent of a, of a rivet. I think I'm still in good shape. That's better. Hey guys, what do you think? Got to flip back over. Let's have a look. Well, that looks pretty good. And really, this can be reused for another string. Well, if you ask me, that's pretty decent still, given the cost of blue painter's tape. You can see I picked up a little bit of paint in, or tape in this guy, but that'll come off with a fingernail as will that. And this is with the rivet tape. Okay, so I got the tape back on these, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to back rivet all of these stiffeners in, 
and then go around, inspect everything, look for bad rivets, and then we'll basically have a rivet drilling out party, get the few that we need to replace, all drilled out as uh, one big gong show. Just thinking before I do these guys, I should probably just hand buck this last one while I can actually still get to it. And I think I'm going to do that. So I'll just switch up my back rivet for my mushroom set and take care of these four. Definitely coming out guys Wow, that's one of the ugliest I've done in a while mm. Some people like these Some people say all they do is fuck shit up. I believe the latter And I still can't get it in in here anyways I want to show you what's going on so far. Do have a couple mistakes here, but they're not really critical. They're not some big ones, um, but we're going to have to drill some rivets out. And then um, the reason why I kind of skipped these back guys here is because I really have to open the panel up. I'm going to wait till I have a helper to just so I can maintain holding the skin nice and flat up against the back riveting plate and also pull the upper portion up so I can get in there and, and, and do some riveting. As you can see, these guys here, they really didn't turn out very well, so I'm gonna drill that out, I'm gonna drill that one out, and I'm gonna drill that one out down there. I might even drill this one out here because although it doesn't look too bad, it's a little bit overdone. We're just gonna do them again when we, when we have a helper. To really get the skin pulled back, but everything else looks pretty good. Let's see if I can give you a good example of a rivet that I am going to pull out. This guy here, it's you can see it's kind of kicked over a little bit. And I also think I'm going to redo this one right here. Because it's kicked over and I can see the base of my dimple. That's not completely covered and that's not good and we want to deal with that. Hope you're enjoying these videos guys. If you have any uh, questions or comments or suggestions, please let me know. I would love to learn and grow as a part of this process with all of you. I'm gonna still push forward and keep assembling and then, like I said, we're gonna have a rivet drill out party. One of the next things we're gonna have to do is get the nut plates riveted on our trim tab servo support or skin support. Um, because this is going to have to get then riveted to our skin. So I have to look after the nut plates first. And if you remember from previous videos, we're going to be using the Avery Tool Oops Rivet Saver Kit. Basically, 
If you look, they have extremely small flanges on them. This is where you can get these. So these are like if you uh, made a mistake in a number 40 hole and you wanted to drill it out to a number 30, well you could use this and the head is the same size as a number 30. Well I'm trying to kind of only countersink, as you can remember, I only barely machine countersunk those. A NAS 1097-3, if I can get this in here, just fits in there real beautiful. I'm going to be riveting all these nut plates on, and then if I need to uh, grind any of these down after the fact, I'll do so with a Dremel tool, and then uh, add a little touch up a primer uh, if needed anywhere. There it is from the back side, and again that's the one we're going to replace, all stepped and not cool. Well, we got some stuff done. I got some rivets marked out that I'm going to drill out, like those guys there. And I really got to figure out a decent way of getting all the way back into that root. Always seems to be an issue where it comes to dimpling or riveting all these last rivets down into the roots of bends and stuff like that. Really, I mean, this is just the same if you've watched my practice flap videos. Back riveting is back riveting. Obviously a little bit easier with ailerons and whatnot because you don't have the bend back here. You have a trailing edge wedge to deal with, like the rudder. So this just poses some different challenges, but believe it or not, I am out of AN42683 and a half rivets. I, I did have all these guys, but they're from an old kit and they're actually age hardened and they've given me some issues and cracking and whatnot, so I don't use them and I'm just gonna buy some more. Till then, uh, if anyone has any suggestions as to how I can take care of the uh, rivets in the root of the bend there, that would be amazing and I'm going to continue on with the uh, trim tab servo area. Once I get some more rivets, a back rivet that assembly onto the skin and then we'll start building the spar skeleton, get that all fitted in here and then we can do final assembly and fit up of the trim tab skin and get the elevator skin bent final. Lots of work still to do, but things are going well, and I look forward to seeing everyone for the second part to this probably three-part series of final assembly of the left elevator RV7. Take care.